Hello ethical hackers and welcome to the world of hacking and bug bounty hunting. Today you will learn the tools I use when I hunt for bugs from reconnaissance to enumeration and later we will explore the tools that I use for finding your first security vulnerabilities. Every craftsman has its toolbox and a bug bounty hunter is no different. However, it's easy to get lost in the growing number of bug bounty tools which get published by the community every day. That's why one of the goals of this episode is to provide you with the minimal tools which provide the maximum return. Bug bounty tools for general reconnaissance. When you hunt for bugs, the first thing you will do is recon. This step is critical because if you don't do it well, you will have a hard time down the road. And if you overdo it, it will waste your time. So it's important you keep a good balance since you are trading your time when you hunt for bugs. The goal of recon is to gather as much data as possible about the company you target. Unlike a red team assignment, you won't fish employees since targeting them is out of scope. That's why I like to focus on finding subdomains, IP ranges, URLs, API keys, etc. To do that, I use the following tools. AMAS OWASP AMAS is a Swiss Army knife for recon. It performs open source intelligence and active reconnaissance using various techniques. You can use it to map the external assets of your targets in order to address your attack service and craft your plan of attack. It's a well-maintained project and you can install it in many ways, but I prefer to run it on Docker. It also generates detailed graphs and interfaces with other tools such as Maltigo, a famous open source intelligence software. AMAS has helped many bug bounty hunters find new assets and report vulnerabilities. GitHub You can use GitHub to collect a lot of data about your target. Most of the time, you will find sensitive information leaks from API keys to passwords. This is possible because employees accidentally push code without proper verification. Unfortunately for the company, these commits occasionally contain hard-coded credentials which allows you to access deep services. Some bug bounty hunters specialize in this area and find highly impactful bugs. Although many tools have been developed to enumerate repositories and find sensitive data, they don't cover the whole search space. That's why those hunters invest considerable time conducting manual research. One of the main wizards in this area is the gentleman, and he has made an awesome talk about GitHub Recon on the Bug Crowd University videos. You can check it out, the link is shared in the blog post related to this episode, which is linked in the description. Shodan While GitHub is the search engine for code repositories, Shodan specializes in internet-connected devices. In other words, if there is a public IP exposing a service on a certain port, it is available for Shodan to grab its banner and index its metadata. You'd be surprised how many exposed services there are online. From IP cameras with default credentials to industrial control systems, Shodan allows you to access all of them. There's a great DEF CON talk, which is both scary and amusing at the same time. I recommend you watch it to see how exposing services to the public can be so dangerous. Shodan supports many operators as well. As a bug bounty hunter, you can use them to build your dorks and answer key questions about your target from a network perspective. For example, you can get an idea of the top ports, the IP ranges, the ASN numbers, the country locations, etc. There's also an API which you can use to automate your recon process. Wayback Machine What goes online stays online as long as it gets indexed. That's because there are projects such as the Wayback Machine, which indexes and stores copies of the web pages, books, audio, video, images, etc. 
The project exists to provide knowledge for everyone, but this is useful from a reconnaissance perspective for hackers because you can dig into previous copies of a target looking for any information disclosures, old URLs, removed files, etc. However, the process of going through tons of indexed content is tedious. Luckily, there are many tools out there which automate the process. Personally, I use Wayback URLs and Gal get all the URLs, which give somewhat the same results. Google Hacking Database I'm sure that all of you jump to Google when you first want to learn more about the target you want to test. However, do you make use of Google Docs? These are queries which use Google search operators to return precise results, such as only PDF files of a certain website or administration panels of a certain technology in a range of subdomains or any other need you might have. The only thing that limits you is your imagination. Even if you don't have enough imagination, people have been sharing their Google dorks for ages. You can find them in the Google Hacking Database and get inspiration. For example, if you found that a target uses a certain technology, you can look for it on that database to see previous dorks, which might be helpful in your recon process. So these are some resources which can serve as bug bounty tools when you perform recon. However, there are certainly many other tools and resources, and one episode simply cannot include all of them. Bug bounty tools for subdomain enumeration. So far, we've seen how you can perform general reconnaissance, but the hacking process involves enumeration in all stages. And one of the first stages is subdomain enumeration, which aims at finding as many subdomains as possible. The community has developed many bug bounty tools to assist you during this exercise. Asset Finder I've already mentioned this tool in my bug bounty hunting methodology in a previous episode. It uses multiple sources like Certificate Transparency, Facebook, VirusTotal, etc. It works out of the box, but if you want more results, you can configure the API keys for the services which need one. Provided that you have Go installed and configured, the command is simple. You just have to pipe your target to the tool, like echo domain.com pipe asset finder dash dash sabs dash only to include only subdomains. AMAS. We've talked about OWASP AMAS in the beginning of this article as a general bug bounty tool for reconnaissance. Well, you can use it for subdomain enumeration as well. It supports passive and active enumeration, performs DNS resolution, and can also brute force the subdomains based on the word list of your choice. The user guide is very detailed and gives example commands that you can run. The simplest and quickest subdomain enumeration command would be amass enum d domain.com passive. Be aware though that it might take some time to run if you give it a huge list of domains. Google. You can use Google Dorks to find subdomains as well. To do that, you can use the site operator. An example would be site column domain.com. Once you get the results, you can enumerate the subdomains one by one using negative search. For example, suppose we found sub.domain.com. You can eliminate that result using site column domain.com minus site column sub.domain.com. Repeat this process until you no longer get any results from Google. As you may have noticed, the process is tedious and takes some time. But luckily, there are tools such as the Harvester and Sublister, which you can use for such queries. However, bear in mind that they can get rate limited, which might return only a subset of the existing subdomains. Wayback URLs and GAL We have seen how digging into indexed content is important during the general reconnaissance phase. Well, it is also equally important when it comes to subdomain enumeration. 
I find it useful to run Wayback URLs and GAL to grab potential subdomains which might go under the radar of AMAS. It's always useful to combine multiple tools to get the most exhaustive results. The commands are simple and easy. For either Wayback URLs or GAL, you simply pipe your target domain to it. I like to use unfurl as well to extract the domain part from the results. So the command will be echo domain.com pipe wayback urls pipe unfurl space domains. Alt DNS. When it comes to enumeration, you can boost your results using brute force. To do that, I usually combine keywords related to my target. Using Alt DNS, I quickly generate permutations which usually get used by companies. For example, suppose the company's main domain is XYZ. Well, the word list would contain subdomains like staging-xyz or xyz-dev and the like. The command is straightforward. You run the tool while providing the domain's file and the words you want to use for permutations. So that would be altdns-i domain.txt, dash o output.txt, dash w words.txt. Mass DNS. After generating a list of potential subdomains, I use mass DNS to resolve the resulting list for valid and existing subdomains. A word of warning though, this process can yield false positives, depending on the quality of the DNS resolvers you're using. You can find more about this problem on a GitHub issue, which is always linked in the blog post. Rather than using the resolvers.txt file provided by MassDNS, you can get a list available on public-dns.info. Then, the command is simple. Just use the MassDNS command with the list of resolvers and the alt-dns word list you have generated before. So that would be MassDNS-r resolvers file dash t a to grab only the a records then alt dns word list and then dash w results.txt to save the output into the results.txt file these are the tools i like to use when performing enumeration i hope you found this content helpful don't forget to like subscribe and share this content because it supports me to continue sharing such content Next time, I will show you the tools I use to perform scanning, directory enumeration, and web application testing. Until then, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.